Hello guys, S2W here as your average consumer with another casual consumer's review. I was in the downtown area of Toronto today for a meeting and I was able to walk by Eaton Center. I thought maybe I should hit up the Nike store and check out a few new releases that came out just a few days ago. To tell you the truth, I wasn't really interested in them at first because of the colorway, but seeing them in person changed my mind. So I picked these up regardless for a review. Today, I have the Nike Air Zoom Mariah Flyknit Racer in the Hyper Crimson colorway for a review. For those who didn't know, Nike Flyknit Racers were rumored to have stopped production. Because of this, a lot of people have been wondering if this version could be its successor as it contains major similarities from the regular racers yet with noticeable updated designs and construction on this new model. But in truth, it's actually modeled after Nike's Air Mariah racing shoe that released in 1988. The inspiration for this 2017 model strives to bring modern features and materials to upgrade the shoe for today's lifestyle standards. So not only was this upgraded model built for speed, but also with comfort and wearability in mind. Now let's take a closer look at these sneakers. For its first release, Nike introduced a colorway that paid homage to the 1988 model by using a similar iconic colorway of that silhouette with white, blue, and infrared. But instead of using the same red from the 1988 pair, we have a hyper crimson or a very bright highlighter orange at the midsole on this pair instead. Staying in tune with Nike's modern knit technology, they brought over Flyknit technology to this pair of Mariah Racer, which is known for its durable, supportive, flexible, breathable, and seamless form-fitting properties as if you're wearing an unnoticeable lightweight sock. Although it's flexible, it is not stretchable. By touch, the overall texture of this upper feels similar to the regular Flyknit Racer. If we look at the shoes inside out, you can see it is perforated really well with multiple ventilation points of entry, including the toe box as well. Although not as apparent as the Flyknit Racers, these Mariah Racers should provide proper airing for our feet. For this Mariah Racer, the swoosh on both the lateral and medial side of this sneaker is in black. And just like the regular Flyknit Racers, the swoosh feels very static or solid by touch, as if the shade was colored with paint that's dried up. Also to ensure a more secured fit, you will see the fabric cabling running along the side of the shoe and becoming lace eyelets, what I assume is Nike's fly wire. So when you fasten up the white rope laces that came with this shoe, the side will tighten up around your feet as well. Moving up towards the sneaker, the shoe does not have a traditional separate tongue. Instead, they seamlessly attach a piece of sock-like stretchable fabric that flawlessly creates the one-piece upper of this shoe. In a closer look, this blue fabric is also composed of purple lines as well, which makes up the stretchy ankle hugging sock collar specifically designed for this model. At the back of the shoes, we will see a rising pull tab sticking up presumably to help the user put on the shoes more easily. Here, you will also see an external supportive plastic heel counter that adds a bit of structure and durability to the fit and upper quality. However, the plastic heel support does feel very weak, as I can easily manipulate, push, and fold the cage. It won't do a lot to add structure, but it's definitely better than not adding anything here. As for the midsole, Nike used their responsive Zoom Air cushion sole that comfortably reduces impact on our daily uses. Split into crimson on the upper half and white on the bottom half, by touch, the cushion feels like a thick compressible foam that you can already push in with your fingers, so I'm pretty sure it'll compress even better when there's weight on it. Unlike the Flyknit racers though, there are no indents or grooves on the midsole, but rather a continuous, smooth, and streamlined surface. Inside the shoe, these came with removable ortholite insoles just like the regular Flyknit racers. The face of the insole is in black with a light blue Nike Air logo at the heel portion for this colorway. While flipping it over, you will see the ortholite branding with a green foam base. Under the insole inside the shoe, surprisingly, you will see a fuzzy layer of fabric laying on top of the midsole. At the internal heel area, you will see that they have reinforced the wall with another piece of lining, further increasing the structure and durability at the back to prevent heel slippage. Other than that, the whole midfoot and forefront of the shoe is just raw flyknit fabric. Flipping over the sneaker, we have a black rubber outsole with arrow-shaped traction patterns for outsole durability and grip. At the tip of this outsole, we have the word Air branding, while at the midfoot region, we will see the Nike swoosh branding. At the heel area, we will also see an Air Zoom window with the Air branding to label the cushioning. Anyways, here are some Nike Air Zoom Mariah Flyknit Racer in the Hyper Crimson colorway fit footage. Fit-wise, surprisingly, I was able to fit these in my true to size. 
Keep in mind, I usually like my Flyknit racers half size out, but these Mariah Flyknits fit basically the same at true to size for me. Width wise though, it does feel the same narrowness as the racers, but I personally feel that the sock like Flyknit upper seems more forgiving and expandable than the regular Flyknit racers. I'm not sure if the removed true tongue affected this model's fit, but this sock like wrapping our foot style fit at true to size worked out the same as if I have gotten this at half size up. If you were to buy this model, I would suggest you to try them on in store first. But if you can't, I'd say go with your Flyknit racer size for safety measures because the overall fit feels the same down the road as the regular Flyknit racers. Comfort wise, I still have to admit that these won't be the best shoes for wide footers like me. Like I said, the shape fits very narrow. The greatest thing about this shoe is that it's very lightweight and breathable, just like regular racers. Aside from the upper, the midsole cushioning could be regarded as both ways in terms of an upgrade and downgrade unfortunately for me. The midsole does feel more reactive and cushiony when compared to the regular Flyknit racers, but is it by a lot? I personally don't think so. It feels almost the same to me and you won't notice the difference much unless you have both shoes on at the same time. Because the midsole is thicker though, our feet is higher above the ground compared to Flyknit racers as well. The downgrade is detrimental in my perspective as the midsole cushioning creases like hell on these. Although the midsole looks almost identical to the Flyknit racers, these Mariah racers did get rid of the indents from that version in order to make this model like the 1988 Air Mariahs. And this to me is a step back personally as I do not like the look of creasing a lot. Even though it's my first time trying these on, I can already see the shoe wrinkling as if I've worn them for several times already. So FYI, these do crease very easily. I have to say though, I really like the overall upper, especially the stretchy sock collar because it provides the easy slip on fit for a quick turnaround. If you need to go somewhere immediately, just yank it wide and boom, slide your feet in and you're good to go. You don't even need to constantly unlace and relace them. Price wise, these were retailed at $200 Canadian before tax, the same as a regular priced Flyknit Racer. However, Flyknit Racers are going on sale now because of this new model. And personally, the creasing just killed the look of this shoe for me. And for the bang of a buck, I'd say the Flyknit Racers are still better overall unless they somehow figure out a way to stop the creasing in the future. But then again, that's just me nagging. As always, throw me some likes if you like this video and let me know in the comments if you think you'll want at least one of this model in your collection. I have heard that in Europe, these have dropped where the Nike swoosh was in orange instead. It seems like North America got the black swoosh version, so there are two different versions of these hyper crimson available in the world apparently. There will be more beautiful colorways like the multicolor and Oreos coming soon too, so if you did not fancy the OG colorway, you may want to strive for those colors instead. That's it for today, S2W signing off.